Severe weather can strike at any time, and you can take steps now to help keep you and your family safe. The Storm Track 3 team looks back at the biggest local impacts over the last century. We've got you covered on how to be ready for the worst. Project Tornado starts right now. Good evening. I'm Storm Track 3 Chief Meteorologist JC Brienne. Tornadoes are one of the most dangerous forms of severe weather, and they're responsible for millions of dollars in damage in the U.S. each year. The National Weather Service says an average of 800 tornadoes annually are reported nationwide. We believe education saves lives. That's why we do Project Tornado each year. So join me and the Storm Track 3 team for this next half hour to make sure you know what to do when disaster strikes. Nowhere in the U.S. is safe from a tornado. Tornadoes have been reported in all 50 states since we first started tracking them more than 70 years ago. But what are they? A tornado is a violent rotating column of air that stretches from the base of a thunderstorm to the ground. The ingredients come together with the meeting of warm, humid air from the Gulf of Mexico and the cold, dry air from the Rocky Mountains. And it typically happens in the central U.S you've probably heard the nickname Tornado Alley. Tornadoes are something we are all too familiar with here in our region. I'm Storm Track 3 meteorologist Nick Boynton. Just barely in our rear view mirror, we have the Dresden Tornado, a small town of a little more than 3,000 people in Weekly County. Dresden was hit by a powerful EF1 tornado on December 9th. One resident told us the whole thing happened in just a few minutes. Roofs were torn off of houses, and mobile homes were lifted from their foundations. While loss of life isn't uncommon for an EF1 tornado, thankfully, only a few people were injured in this last one last December. But Dresden wasn't the only town involved in the tornado outbreak in early December. About two hours east, a powerful EF3 tornado touched down in Clarksville that same day. The tornado traveled close to 50 miles, destroying hundreds of homes and killing at least six people. This video captures one of the most dangerous places that you can be when a tornado happens, your car. One mother there says the whole thing was like a movie. She somehow survived and even found her baby. When did you first hear the tornado warning siren? When me and Princeton were already in the air. He tried to grab him, but he couldn't. And the tip of the tornado sucked them both up. He found him laying in a tree, like somebody placed him in this tree. Like, I don't know how we survived. How do you think you survived it? It had to have been God. I'm Storm Track 3 meteorologist Garrett Hamilton. One of the deadliest tornadoes that happened in U.S. history happened right here in our region. It's been close to 99 years since the Tri-State Tornado of 1925. The Twister still holds many records here in the U.S., including being the deadliest and longest tracking tornado. 695 people lost their lives and more than 2,000 were injured. Now, part of that has to do with the technology we had available at the time. In our area, Gorham, Murfreesboro, DeSoto, and West Frankfort were some of the most impacted towns. Back then, there was no warning of a tornado until it hit. When we first envisioned Project Tornado, we wanted to air it in late February or early March, well in advance of severe weather season. That would offer our viewers ample of time to prepare, but recent patterns have shown tornadoes occurring earlier in the year. Even early March now sits within the cusp of what's traditionally been tornado season in America's heartland. I explored this pressing issue with two experts that are content partners with WSIL. Dr. Justin Schof, director of the School of Earth Systems and Sustainability at Southern Illinois University, is a renowned expert on climate change and a partner in WSIL's Building a Better Community initiative. Dr. Greg Postel is a hurricane and storm specialist at the Weather Channel, WSIL's weather and climate change partner. Dr. Schof and Postel help us unravel the complex relationship between a changing climate and the tornadoes that impact our region. By now, we've noticed that our region is warming up. In fact, globally, 2023 was the hottest year on record. While atmospheric scientists are comfortable linking the extended heat waves to climate change, connecting a specific tornadic event to climate change isn't as easy. And so it's much harder for us to say when a tornadic event occurs that this was or was not related to climate change. Whereas with heat waves, 
we, we know very solidly that climate change is making them worse. However, Dr. Schof tells us that climate change is changing the odds for tornadoes, similar to a game of dice. And if you think of like double sixes as being what you would roll to get uh, uh, an event, maybe climate change has changed one of the dice so it has two sixes. So it increases the probability that you would roll double sixes and get that extreme event. INSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation, can have a big impact on the tornado season here in the heartland. When we have either a transition to La Nina or a full-fledged La Nina event, we start to see the jet stream take shape over the United States, which brings in a southwest flow aloft, bringing in moist and warm and unstable air from the Gulf of Mexico, leading to more severe weather typically than in other times of the year, and in particular in other phases of the oscillation like El Nino. If this happens more frequently, Dr. Postel warns that this could extend our tornado season, broadening the infamous tornado alley right to our doorstep. So it's more of an expansion that we're seeing of the traditional notion of tornado alley. And in addition to that, we're also starting to see the lengthening of the tornado season because generally the atmosphere is warming up. We are seeing tornado season really go a little bit earlier across uh, parts of the south during winter and extend later on into the season as well. This means it's more important than ever for meteorologists to better understand when a storm might spawn a tornado. We have a pretty good grasp about the ingredients atmospherically and a bigger picture of what causes severe weather and pretty good idea of how to predict those larger scale ingredients. The problem is we still don't know which thunderstorms, which supercell thunderstorms are going to produce tornadoes and which ones just don't have a chance to do that. Scientists are working very hard on really understanding the ingredients that go into making a tornado from a severe thunderstorm that you might think produce a tornado that perhaps otherwise doesn't. All those will be sorted out in the coming years as scientists uh, work on these problems. But it's not all about prediction. Preparedness is key. As the traditional tornado alley shifts and expands, in seasons elongate, knowing when and how to respond to warnings becomes crucial. You may be going about your daily routine and not have any clue that severe weather is coming. Um, and the only way to know is if you happen to be tuning in. Those are the days and those are the instances that worry me the most when we have a deadly severe weather event unfolding and people just are not aware of it coming. We can't prevent tornadoes, but we can have a plan for when they happen. The single best thing you can do is get to a basement. If you can't get to a basement, get to a small interior room in your house. Stay away from windows and cover your head however you can. If you live in a mobile home, you need to have a place you can go. And if you are caught outside or in a vehicle, get to a nearby building. Never go under a highway overpass or a bridge. There are a few other common misconceptions about tornado planning. Some people say that you should open your windows when the pressure in, to help with the pressure in your house. That's wrong and can be very dangerous. You also may have heard to stay away from the southwestern corner of your house. This is also false too because tornadoes can come from any direction. And some people believe that areas like rivers, mountains, and even major cities are safe from tornadoes, but this is also wrong as well. Planning is the single best thing you can do to stay safe. In just a few minutes here, we're going to take you to Mayfield, where in 2021, our team heard firsthand from people who lived through a devastating tornado. Project Tornado continues right after this short break. <laughs> 